get it tennis. No, I thought it was, I mean, gosh, all the way into the, when we cut it to 10 points in that third quarter, I thought we're gonna, we're gonna steal this thing. You know, I really did, I felt great. I thought, I thought it was going good the whole first half. I felt good. Definitely going into halftime felt good, you know, and then it just, you know, kind of got away from us. But I, I thought the crowd was awesome and really helped us. 10 points in the second half, there was signs, there was definitely times in the game I thought our defense played way better. You know, we just we gave up a couple of those big plays, but there were definite times where I thought they played better. You know, there was times where I thought our offense, you know, for a half we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best team in the league. The Vandals play Sunbelt favorite Georgia Southern close for three quarters, but give up one too many big plays. Now another stout Sunbelt foe awaits in Arkansas State for Paul Petrino's team. And a special guest joins the show who has made his mark on the Vandals. Inside the Vandals, now. Hey, welcome into another edition of Inside the Vandals. So happy you could be with us. I'm your host, Tom Purvis, and I'm joined now by Vandals head football coach, Paul Petrino. Coach, as always, thanks for taking the time. Thanks, Tom. Well, the best team in the Sun Belt you guys played on Saturday, like you said, hadn't been beaten in two years in that first half. You guys went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Obviously, the game didn't turn out the right way for you guys, but how can you build off that first half? You know, you can build by it was the best team, and, and really we played really good football that first half. I thought both sides of the ball did some really good things. Um, we kind of went back and forth the first half, and that's how, that's how good games are. You know, that's how they come about. I thought our defense did a really good job of holding the field goals a couple times. Offensively, we had some great drives. We can't get stopped on the one-yard line and have to settle for a field goal. That was that's something that we have to get corrected. But I just think both sides of the ball played really well. I thought they came out, played with great passion, um, didn't show any fear, and then really went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best team for you know really almost three quarters. And then uh, and then we kind of just got worn out. We just we just couldn't quite keep exchanging blows with them the whole way so that's where we got to get we got to get where we can do it for all four quarters how different do you think that game would have been if you guys get touchdowns instead of field goals in that first half it could have been different no question you know with those, those two drives we get down there we also had a couple plays that you know we just got to execute a little bit better and maybe get some big plays from farther out too so you know football is a it's a crazy game you always tell the guys going into the game there's about six plays that are going to make the difference of the game but you don't know when those six plays are going to happen that's why you got to do your job on every single play and do what your coach is doing on every play and, and play with great effort. And if you know if you get those six plays going in your way, then you then you win. But if you don't, then you don't. So, uh, but I was really proud of our guys the way they came out and, and started the game and how hard they played and really played hard the whole game. We just got to we got to get our execution better in crucial situations. Do you think your defense played well enough to win in this one? Uh, I think they definitely did the first half, and, and they probably did. Throughout most of the game, we just can't give up a couple of those long, big plays. Was there anything that you noticed, anything change in your guys' mentality going into that second half, or did you feel pretty good going into the second half? I felt great going into the second half. I thought coming out of the, you know, coming out of the locker room, I felt really good. They went and, and got a score. We came back. I think really what we came back and scored and cut the game to 10 points. Defense got a stop. They punted us. Um, we had two running plays that we executed decent, got it to third and medium, you know, ran triple slant, one of our favorite plays, and you know, it was a little questionable how early the guy was there or wasn't there, and, and Des just got to make that catch. And then I, you know, then I called the fake punt on fourth down and, and we didn't execute it. So that, that's kind of where I felt the game, you know, we needed to go score on that drive. I thought that was very important. Um, we did have another drive where we get all the way down here and then get stopped on fourth and one. So, you know, we didn't you know, we did. We only had one time we were lined up to punt the ball in the second half, and we tried to fake it. So it wasn't like we weren't moving the ball enough. We just got executed on short yardage. What was the feeling when you guys pulled within ten there in the second half? Obviously, you have the great crowd here. What was the feeling there? It was great. You know, I thought our, our crowd was unbelievable. The students were really loud behind us. All the fans were awesome, and you know, you just wanted to come out here and win it for, for all the support for all everyone in you know in the whole Vandal family, and we wanted to make sure we get that done. But uh, our guys fought, you know, I, I tell them all the time, if you fight and give it everything you got, then you can look in the mirror and be proud of yourself. So we just got to, we got to get our execution better. But I really think, you know, for the most part, everybody fought as hard as they could. With the big plays uh, that Georgia Southern had, are those the, the plays that you just kind of circle and say, guys, if we just take care and not give up these big plays, we probably win this? Yeah, no question. You know, if we, 
really it's two sided. If the offense executes on short yardage and the defense stops a couple of those big plays, then you got a chance to win the game. So at least we got it where now we can narrow it down to a couple of things. So uh, you know that that's the best team. I you know I wouldn't be surprised if they go undefeated in the league again. They're just you know they just rotate complete whole platoons of guys. They play two whole section of guys on offense and defense. They got a lot of depth. And they, you know, as the game went on, they just kind of wore us down a little bit. Matt Linehan found Desmond Epps for touchdowns of 60 and 44 yards, the two longest plays of the season. Were you happy to see that explosiveness? And, and how much does that explosiveness give you beyond just even the six points in terms of the momentum of a play like that? You know, it helps a ton of momentum. It really helps so you don't have to go, like the one drive that we got stopped right there and had to kick a field goal, that was a 16-play drive. So sometimes you get a big play here and there and score within four or five plays, that that helps you because you don't uh, you don't have to execute so many times in a row and give yourself a chance to make a mistake. So the more we can keep hitting some of those big plays, the better. Desmond Epps right now leading uh, the nation, I believe, in receiving yards. What's made him so good? You know, he's, he's got great speed and quickness, but he's really worked hard and improving his footwork. You know, he's really improved himself on his route running, how he gets in and out of his breaks. And I think Matt's doing a good job of putting the ball on him. And, you know, for someone to lead anything in offense, it really takes all 11 guys. The offensive line has to protect long enough. The other receivers have to run their routes hard enough to get him open. And so it's really a team effort to get him there. I wanted to ask those two plays, did you guys see something in the defense where Matt found Desmond over the top? Um, was it a situational thing, or do you see that happening more and more? Nah, the first one where they were just playing man, they were getting everybody down in the box to stop the run, really, because we were running the ball pretty good. So we went by him. The second time, they actually had him bracketed, but he just split the bracket and, and got the big play there. Matt Linehan, you mentioned after the game that since USC, he'd been dealing with some ankle pain. How much of a concern do you see that being going forward? Yeah, you know, it's always a concern. You, you want to make sure that your quarterback stays healthy. Uh, good thing is Jake's been working hard, and, and Jake will be ready to, to take some reps if he has to. But, you know, Matt showed great toughness to staying out there and competing, and uh, I was just very proud of, him, of the toughness that he showed. And then the status of Ryan Edwards, how much did you feel the absence of him and, and what's his status? Uh, his status is still day by day. Uh, that hurt us a little bit depth wise. You know, you always, you never want to lose one of your top weapons. And so that, that hurt a little bit having him out. But I do think Glenn Antoine played very well. You know, Glenn played hard and, and played tough and did a good job for us. It just, it just hurt not to have both of them keep each, keeping each other fresh. He's Vandals head coach Paul Petrino. We're going to take a break, but when we're back, we're talking about the Vandals heading back on the road and taking on Arkansas State. That's up next on Inside the Vandals. <laughs> 